can we start off with what categories should you consider when you're when it comes to setting these financial goals? Well, I think you got to think about things in terms of your lifestyle when you think about financial goals. So like, I think for most of us, it's getting to the point in life where we can become be financially independent. And I use that word instead of retirement, because nowadays, most people aren't fully retiring where they're just not doing anything. You know, most people are just leaving their regular nine to fives. And it's nice to have a point in the future where you can just depend on the money that you save in your portfolio. You know, the other thing to think about, too, is it's, it's you think about your own lifestyle. You know, it's important to travel. Is it important to have a boat or even a second home? So, you know, really the first thing that, that comes to mind when you're thinking about financial planning is think about what your financial goals are. What are you really trying to accomplish with your money? So once you set those financial goals right, you obviously have to prioritize them to stay on track. So what should people consider about, you know, how they manage their goals? Well, I think, you know, especially for, for couples, married couples or, you know, people that are in relationships, I think they need to come to the table with what, what, they're bo what they both really want to accomplish. You know, everybody's going to be different when it comes to prioritizing. Now, for most people, again, it's to become financially independent. And the first thing that you really need to look at is how much are you spending? You know, for most people, they really don't know truly what it costs them to live on a weekly, monthly or even yearly basis. So I think most important thing is to look at what you're spending and not necessarily come up with a budget, but just find out what's going out the door year over year, month over month, week over week. You know, we know that many financial experts really disagree on whether you should pay off your debt before you're saving for retirement. I want to get your thoughts on this. And do you think it's possible to do both? Well, I think I think that's a tricky one, but let's let's really simplify it. So I think there's two kinds of debt. There's good debt and there's bad debt. And an example of bad debt would be like credit card debt. You know, right now, if you look at what interest rates are on credit card debt, you're looking at anywhere from 11 to 18 percent, just absolutely egregious. So, you know, what I would say to anybody that's that's out there that has credit card debt, I would say, first of all, find out what the rates are. You know, if it's above four percent, which most likely it is, I'd say pay that off immediately. But like if you're thinking about more in terms of debt, like a mortgage, where right now, you know, most people have very low rates. Um, you know, anything under 4%, I would say it really doesn't make sense to pay it off because what you have to think about is what am I getting in, in my investment portfolio versus what it would cost to pay down this mortgage. So, you know, in a well-balanced investment portfolio over time, you're going to get about a 45 to 5% rate of return on your money. It doesn't really make sense to pull that money out of the market just to pay off a mortgage if that money's growing better in the portfolio. Yeah, it's it's a kind of old adage that not all debt is equal, right? And to your point there, exactly. I think it's usually more helpful to look at the interest rate. Um, and most people, a lot of people don't even know their interest rate, which is a, another key, key and critical point. Uh, you know, investing is obviously certainly important, but it's often not prioritized as high as other essentials like paying off debt, like we were talking about, or saving for retirement. Are there any financial milestones that you should hit before focusing heavily on investing? Well, you know, I think it's a misnomer that um, investing and retirement planning are two separate things. And, and really, you know, to, to be effective in your retirement planning, you have to invest that money. And what I mean by that is if you think about it like right now, most of us are getting less than 1% interest in our, our money market and checking and savings accounts. Uh, whereas in a well-balanced portfolio, just from a cash flow perspective, like if you think about it from interest and dividends, you're probably going to average 25 to 3%, which is 250 to 300% better than what's sitting in your savings account. So to, to put that in perspective, most folks that are just saving and keeping money in cash and trying to plan for retirement, they're gonna have to work on average 10 to 20 years longer than someone who is responsibly investing their money in a diversified portfolio. So you know, really what I call savings for retirement and investment portfolio is super savings because you're getting a much better return than money just sitting in cash that's basically stagnant. And if you think about it in terms of inflation, which is going up about 3.1% a year over year, uh, since the end of World War II, you're essentially losing money sitting in cash. So I think it's really dangerous to keep a lot of money in cash, especially when it comes to retirement planning and saving for retirement. I like that super savings. And just like with debt, not all savings equal. There's different pockets of savings, uh, you know, from the cash emergency fund to then at least putting something where it beats inflation. Um, you know, how do you prioritize? Let's talk about this. How do you prioritize your financial goals changing depending on your situation? What should you do differently if you're someone who has a kid or, or you know, you're having children now or having a spouse? So, uh, you know, the, the, the big thing for folks that are that are having children right now, um, college planning is very important because if you look at the cost of college year over year, it's going up by about 6%. So, 
that's going to be a major expense for for any couple that has a child or multiple children. So that's that's certainly priority number one is thinking about if college is important, you know, really thinking about you know what it's going to cost to put them through school. The second thing is, of course, if you have a partner or a spouse, you really need to get on the same page as I mentioned before with what your financial goals are. I mean, that's the most important thing. I mean, there's been so many times in my career over the last 10 years that I sat down with a couple and they have completely different ideas about how long they're going to work for, you know, what they want to save for and what their goals are. But you got to, you know, like anything else in a relationship, you got to be on the same page. You got to communicate. Yeah, we know finances can be a tricky thing in a relationship. All right, so the last question I have for you here is an important one, I think. You know, do you have any advice for recent you know, college graduates on prioritizing and setting financial goals, especially as they go into the workforce and make their first real paychecks? Well, you know, I'm going to come off as a little bit of a hypocrite here because I certainly <laughs> didn't do this when I got out of college. You know, what I find is with myself and most of my friends is that, you know, the most important thing to us was going out, hanging out, having a cool car, having a motorcycle. Um, what I would say is if you're just getting out of college, one, get that emergency savings down pat, you know, have three to six months worth of expenses. God forbid something happens. You've got that money. Number two, try to max out your 401k. Now, for a lot of folks that are just coming out of college right now, that's really not financially feasible. But I would say at the very minimum, try and get enough money in there so you get the match. I mean, if you're leaving, if you're not putting enough money in there where you're not getting the match, you're leaving money on the table. And I'll tell you a story. When I was when I was younger and I bought my first car, I went around to every car dealership and beat them up over the price. And I had my dad help me. And I called him up and I said, "Hey, Dad, I got this price." He said, "Well, I asked for another 300 bucks off." And I said, "No, I'm not going to beat them up over the cost of the car." He said, "Well, go to the ATM, take 300 bucks out, and then throw it out the window." So, <laughs> you know, really, what it comes down to is is trying to save as much money as you can and don't leave any money on the table. Try and put as much in the 401k as you can and get the match. Good advice from your dad there and great insight from you today. Thank you so much. Chris Payne, Vice President of Payne Capital Management and co-host of Payne Points of Wealth Podcast.